Tamamdır. Sekizdi. Bu zaman kaybetmeden. Başarılar diliyorum. Okay. Okay. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mehmet Ali Hocam. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to this evening session uh, of the fifth PACES conference. Our speaker is Merve Altek in this session. Uh, let me first introduce her to you briefly. Uh, Merve Altek is a sophomore student at university uh, at the University of Munzur, where she is majoring in English language and literature. And her research interests include feminism, contemporary British novel, and queer theory. And her presentation is titled uh, Dreaming to Reconstruct the Subject, uh, Janet Winterson's Orange Are Not the Only Fruit. Okay, Marve, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hello. I am very delighted to be here with you first, thanks to this virtual conference. And uh, before I start my presentation, I want to uh, offer my special thanks to uh, Mehmet Ali Çelikel Hoca and organizing committee. And also I really thank Pelin Doğan Hocam from the bottom of my heart. And let's get started. First, I try to share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Um, yes, yes, it's okay. Okay, okay Marve, we see it. Okay, wait. Okay, okay. I am starting. As a review of uh, Janet Winterson's novel, or is I not the only fruit? Uh, this presentation aims to explore the protagonist, uh, Janet's guest, in search of her expression of sexual identity in her dreams, stories, and uh, imagination. And the protagonist, uh, Janet, suffers from sexuality uh, turmoil with the discovery of her uh, sexual identity, and she is demonized by the family, church, and society. And uh, based, based on a queer theoretical uh, approach this critical analysis uh, of her storytelling and dreams uh, allow us to comprehend the performative space uh, the protagonist creates for herself as an act of uh, creativity in the process of reconstructing her sexual identity and this presentation explores the ways in which uh, dreams storytelling and imagination open up an uh, invented space uh, for the protagonist to liberate uh, herself from the uh, dictates of heteronormative values of the society and how dreaming uh, enables her to reconstruct her own subjectivity and uh, agency. And let me give you the synopsis of the novel. The protagonist uh, of the novel is Janet who lives with her adoptive parents in England, and Louis, Janet's mother, uh, is a sectarian Christian and dominant, figure, dominant mother figure. Her mother educates Janet about the uh, Bible and Christian way of life uh, at home. At school, Janet is an outcast uh, because uh, she is obsessed with religion. And uh, in time, as and she gets older, Janet realizes that uh, she sometimes disagrees with the idea that church embodies, and she falls in love with Melanie, a worker at church, which uh, falls a contradiction to the religious dictates of the church. And a secret love uh, begins with between these two young women, and we, this is also uh, completely against everything that she has been taught in the church. Then one day, the, the figures in the church and the and her mother learns this affair, and they attempt to exorcise the exorcise the demons uh, in these two young women. And then Melania disappears, and Janet uh, forgets about her. She gets involved in her um, religious practices in church again, and soon Janet falls in love with another woman, Katie. This time, resolved to pursue her aspirations and Janet leaves the church and her home and then uh, she works with a rice job 
after a long while, Jen returns home to see that many things, including her mother, have changed a lot. And in order to understand the, pr the process of reconstructing uh, Janet's identity and uh, normative heterosexuality in the society, it will be useful to apply queer theory. Queer theory rejects all identities related to gender, sex, and sexuality. Queer theory aims to deconstruct gender binarism, and within this, uh, within this theoretical uh, framework, identity is considered to be fluid and, uh, and in constant of flux of becoming. And it questions and uh, focuses on focuses on gender related such as masculinity, femininity, and uh, homosexuality and heterosexuality. In this respect, Judith Butler, a leading figure in queer theory, uh, problematizes gender uh, in the maxims of queer theory. She argues that gender is performative uh, and culturally constructed. And she says gender is the repeated cyclization of the body, a set of repeated acts within a frame that congeals uh, over time to produce the appearance of substance of a natural sort of thing. And also Butler asserts that individuals perpetuate uh, certain normalized acts and gender roles are not inherited, uh, but constructed. In other words, gender uh, reflects limitations and the concept of gender causes people to think, uh, to think within the binary oppositions such as male and female and uh, good and bad. In this sense, seeing, seeing the other as the opposite brings, uh, brings with it a frame embrace of one's own identity and the uh, perception of one's own identity as the best reality. A person who does not fit into the norms that are imposed by the society is cast out of the society and experiences isolation. And in light of this, how these are fictionalized by Janet Winterson in her novel, Orange Are Not the Only Fruit, will be generally reviewed. In the case of Orange Are Not the Only Fruit, Janet, the protagonist, uh, lives in a truly binary and strict religious uh, society. And Janet gets to pursue and find herself through imagination, storytelling, and dreams uh, in this society, which strongly believes that uh, heterosexuality is the norm and the, and the only normal sexual orientation uh, may be crucial in breaking free uh, from her heterosexual, uh, compulsory heterosexuality. And Winterson creates a real world and a fictional world. Throughout her upbringing, uh, Janet uh, is subjected to her mother raising her as a missionary, and hence Louis, her mother, wants to bring up her in accordance, accordance with uh, gender roles based on her un own understanding of religion. One of these gender roles is that there should be only one kind of sexual orientation, which is heterosexuality, and Janet spends her childhood years with her uh, with her mother's strict doctrines, and Butler's theory of uh, gender performativity address, addresses that gender is a set of repeated acts, and it can be seen in Louis' teaching of Janet to Janet. And uh, as Janet questions her life, she makes her first rebellion against the sectarian church. She rewrites the end of a biblical story, Daniel's story. When the lions are eating Daniel in the imagination of Janet, in the true story, Daniel escapes. And uh, when Pastor Finch, one of the uh, members of um, one of the church officer, sees Janet's version of the story, he tries to fix it. And this scene in which um, in which church tries to interfere with the uh, with Janet's creative life. Is, is an also attempt to prevent Janet her expressing herself. And Pastor Finch's comments show that they embody one correct version and do not accept a different way of understanding. 
In addition to imagination, Janet uses storytelling to create a performative space for her uh, for herself to reconstruct her identity. Winterson leaves the readers in a in in a blurred line between fiction and reality. A pastor holds a conference, and Janet described this conference as you see in the screen. The sermon was on perfection, and it was in this moment that I began to develop my first theological disagreement. As you see, she refuses the concept of perfection and invents a story of a prince seeking for a perfect woman. And he refers to a perfect woman who is without blemish inside or out, flawless in every respect. And uh, he has been looking for the perfect woman for years. And three years later, the prince writes the prince writes a book on perfection and he presents the idea uh, world full of perfect beings and he eventually comes across a, a beautiful woman uh, who is described as uh, perfect. The problem is that she is not interested in the prince and she points that the search for perfection she had told him was in, was in fact the search for balance, for harmony and as she rejects him and challenges patriarchy, he orders her head to be chopped off. And the story of the prince looking for the perfection is related to Janet's mother's search for a perfect daughter. And also by refusing to get married, the woman challenges the role of a repressive prince, repressive man. And we can see Janet express herself uh, in her per in her performative fantasy world. However, she cannot challenge authority in her real world. And when Janet tells her first theological uh, disagreement with the church, she also deconstructs this tale to comprehend the normative expectations. And she uses storytelling to liberate herself from the repressive norms of, this, of and teaching of the society. And once again, reality begins to blur. In the chapter, in the chapter titled Numbers, Janet questions the nature of uh, relations between men and women. Janet has a dream in which uh, she is about to marry. Janet tells her dream as you see. And in this dream, Janet's dream reflects her uncertainty about men. And it can be seen that she feels the contradictions toward men. The heavy crown on uh, Janet's head as she walks uh, may actually indicate that she, do, uh, she does not accept compulsory heterosexual marriages. And however, the fact that she imagines husbands in the right way, most importantly, sometimes sees him as her mother may represent an entire repressive system her mother epitomizes. And also, it can be deduced that these figures do not appeal to her, and Mary just seems an unpleasant experience. And the search for her sexual identity can be seen in this dream. And I want to mention briefly a fair tale titled The Beauty and the Beast. Janet goes to the library and uh, to look for answers for the relations between men and women. Janet finds the fair tale uh, titled Beauty and the Beast, and Janet ponders that. Uh, if a monster can be turned into a handsome, handsome prince with one kiss, how can Uncle Bill, her aunt's uh, husband, still be such a horrible man? And, and we can see uh, she thinks that uh, she does not accept these heterosexual marriages. And heterosexual marriages that are believed to be normal and straight allow to uh, mm -hmm. Janet to question gender and sex. Then she comforts uh, herself by saying that it was a good thing. I was destined to become a missionary. And the dream and the effect of that, effect of that let her break from compulsory heterosexual marriage and normative expectation in society. And homosexual, homosexuality is defined as unnatural patience and and not accepted in the understanding of the church and her mother. According to, Tim, according to them, the normal and natural sexual orientation is heterosexuality. And the crisis in the novel occurring this part when, uh, when she falls in love with 
with a woman, Melanie, and Pastor asks, asks her, do you deny you love this woman with the love reserved for man and wife? Pastor gives two choices, love Lord or Melanie, and Janet says that she loves both of them, and she cannot understand why loving Melanie is seen as a sin, and here her biblical interpretations and pastors are in conflict. And then she is punished uh, because she does not fix the uh, boundaries of sexual orientation that is deeply entrenched in the society. As Janet realizes her sexual orientation, the church and her mother attempts to exorcise the demon inside her. However, uh, during, the, during her compulsory isolation, Janet has a hallucination. Hallucinations are, uh, are, the, are on the borders of dream. And an imaginary uh, orange demon who tells her that everyone has a demon appears. But Janet says that, but in the Bible, you keep getting driving, driving out. And the demon counters and says, don't believe all you read. Janet further questions the church and, su and suspects that not everything is true in the Bible. And Janet realizes that letting go of her is demon is giving up everything that makes her who she is. And what and Janet uh, questions, and uh, what sex are you? Janet asks the demon, doesn't matter, does it? After all, that's your problem. The demon answers, and here the demon's refusal to reveal its sex is to avoid categorization, and the writer may deconstruct the gender binary here, and the orange, the orange demon actually indicates a situation that comforts Janet. Janet's acceptance of herself uh, make, uh, may make her realize that who make her realize who she really is. And on the other hand, thanks to this hallucination, Janet creates a space where, can, uh, where, can, where she can discuss the beliefs of the church and search her identity. And to sum up, as can be seen in the uh, novel, the protagonist struggle to free uh, her from the boundaries of the heteronormative values of the society opens up a space where, can, where everything can change and by narratively juxtaposing reality with storytelling, dreams, and uh, imagination, this plays Janet's effort to liberate herself from her sectarian mother and hegemonic society in order to construct her own uh, story, her own narrative. And she reconstructs her own identity. As queer theory argues, uh, by avoiding excluding others, we can invent a world where categorizations are not needed and where differences can coexist and differences do not form hegemonic relationships over uh, each other. And, you know, all constructed fictions of masculinity and femininity marginalize people. So we can embrace a diversity of sexualities and we can uh, break the orange. Thank you for listening. Okay. okay. Um, thank you very much, Marie, for this uh, very thought-provoking presentation. Uh, your presentation effectively argues, explores the ways in which uh, imagination, dreams, and retelling the stories can open up a discursive space to reassert the identity. Uh, okay, thank you very much. The floor is open. Uh, the floor is open to your questions, comments. I'm sure there will be questions. Or at least some comments from the audience. Yes, Fumira. I think Humira wants to ask a question. Humira?
Vera, can you please ask your questions? You raised your hand. Mira actually raised her hand, but okay. Murat, is that? Hoja, maybe I can uh, feel her place as Humeira fixes her problem. Probably she's experiencing a kind of technical one. And so I would like to thank you, Merve, for this uh, illuminating uh, presentation. Uh, I like uh, gender studies and queer theory, especially. Uh, and uh, Butler is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, her studies are, are actually one of my favorite studies in this field. And uh, the fact that she uh, points out that uh, and questions that how can we speak about heter uh, heterosexuality uh, if we do not assume at the same time that there is homosexuality uh, is, I think, very uh, closely related to what you have uh, analyzed in, uh, in the novel because uh, orange is not definitely uh, the only fruit there. Uh, but at the same time, Butler also talks about uh, the process of compulsory heterosexualization of the sexuality. So uh, do we see this in the novel? And if we do, how and, and it, in what ways uh, heterosexual, heterosexuality is felt as compulsory uh, in the novel? Yes, thank you for your uh, comments and your question. Uh, of course, we see uh, because the church and uh, uh, and her mother are uh, her adoptive mother are a uh, dominant figure in the in her uh, constructing her identity, and uh, she she lives she lives uh, her life according to the church, the doctrines of church and the doctrines of her mother. And uh, she does. She also does not accept the, uh, at the beginning of the novel, she does not accept the uh, homosexual marriages. And uh, she doesn't know, because she doesn't know, the church and her mother always says that they are uh, enemies and they are, uh, it is unnatural and it is a normal animal and so uh, i think uh, as you said it is uh, it is related to but the theory of compulsory heterosexuality and uh, thank you i think okay. it's clear thank you Yes, there's another question, I think. Hello. Is there a question? Yes. Yes, please. Um, I would like to ask a um, great presentation, but why did you choose that theory? Because I think it is related with. Uh, first, thank you for your question, uh, and welcome to my presentation. Uh, I think it is related with the uh, with the ideas of the book, and uh, I think uh, I think the protagonist Janet is queer, and uh, this theory is. Uh, 
draw some uh, draw some attention to this book. Okay, good to you. Thank you. You are welcome. Hi, thank you. Okay. So, I think there's another question, Mubeira. Yes, Mubeira. Hi, uh, dear Marve, it was a thought-provoking presentation. Thank you. You are welcome. I thank you. <laughs> so maybe a, a, I I'd like to add a, add a comment. Uh, to break silence, <laughs> first of all. Um, well, uh, Merve, thank you very much for your presentation. I liked your theory and I liked your, your reading of the book. Uh, Janet Winters, I, I read Janet Winterson many years ago. I haven't, I haven't read any books by her very recently, but I read Passion and Oranges Are Not the Fruit. But as you mentioned, uh, the, 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 the gender choices, uh, in what way do the gender choices uh, influence the dream negatively and positively? Because in the previous session, I don't know if you, if you were there, in the previous session I mentioned that there are also uh, negative dreams as well as positive dreams. But in what way do they give direction to, to one's dreams? Because dreams are the reflections of the unconscious mind. Yes, thank you for your question and comments. Uh, I think uh, in the situation of Janet, uh, dreams uh, in her, the dream in this uh, novel uh, is negative and affects her, uh, affects her and negative and positively. Uh, and hallucination, there is an hallucination, and it is also uh, affects her uh, negatively and positively because uh, because she first she afraid of the orange demon, but then she accept herself that uh, she has a demon demon inside her inside of her, and uh, she want to accept this uh, demon and. In in her dreams again, she uh, she doesn't want to marry a, a man. In and in and in her dreams, she she sees a man. Uh, she is a man who is married. Who is get married, and I think it is an her dream also is negative and positive. Okay. Thank you. I think we are coming to the end of the session, Pelin Hoca. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Merve, for your presentation. And thank you all uh, for participation and for your patience. You have waited uh, up to this session. And thank you all. I really appreciate